Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to use smart objects in your Photoshop files so that you can basically build a set of templates where you swap out images inside those templates as needed. So for example, I, um, I do a site called bestappsite.com where I'm constantly changing the screenshot on either an iPhone or an iPad to whatever you know application I'm reviewing. So I don't want to have to build that every single time. So I build one template for each device and then I can just simply swap out the screenshots as needed. Here's how the process works. First, of course, we need something to uh, have our, be our background for our image. So I'm actually going to take advantage of the uh, Creative Cloud market assets for this. So I'm just going to go to my Creative Cloud menu and go over to the assets tab, click on market, and then I'm going to simply type in a search for iPad because there are some images that people have either already created as line art or they've created um, as, as photographs. So here's a cool one where there's actually two screens. I'm going to go ahead and say download and sync this to my Adobe demos library. All right, and I can back out of that in a moment or two. I should get a menu or a pop-up that says the syncing has happened. I see the little icons there or the little uh, arrows there. And it looks like the sync just finished. And let's wait for the pop-up. There's the pop-up. And here it comes into my Adobe Demos uh, library. All right, so now that that graphic has synced, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on it. That will open it up in Photoshop with all of its layers and content. So it looks like the person's already kind of done some, some work to kind of get us started. So what I'm going to do is I don't really need, uh, it doesn't really matter whether I have their screens or not. What I'm going to simply do is place two screenshots onto these. Now, um, here's one problem is that they're angled, but that won't be a problem for Photoshop. So let's go to File. Now you have a choice in the latest version of Photoshop to place embedded or place linked. Previous versions of Photoshop only gave the embedded option. like It was just place because there was no choice. This would mean that the image would be placed inside Photoshop, saved with the Photoshop file. If you were to go back and update the original image outside of Photoshop, Photoshop would not change. It would not know anything about that change. If this were an image that I was going to constantly update in the source program, let's say Illustrator or another Photoshop file, then I would do place linked. But since these screenshots are coming in off my device, um, that would actually be more work than to what I'm gonna, than what I'm about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and say place embedded, and we're going to go ahead and just go to my desktop. And once I'm on my desktop, I see my iPad screen captures folder, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab the first one. Now, when I place it, it automatically comes in as a smart object. I can go ahead and uh, grab my shift key and scale it down. But of course, the problem is, is that it's at the wrong angle. I want it over here on the one on the left. So what I'm going to do is an old trick. I'm just going to simply right click on this and I'm going to say distort. When I say distort, that will give me the handles that I can rearrange and put wherever I want. So I can put that handle up there and you're thinking, how's that going to work? Well, just wait a minute. Let's put this one over here and let's put this one over here. Now, the other problem is that you can see on the side of this um, iPad, it's kind of, there's, there's another iPad in front of it. So we kind of have the, we can see it up here, but as we get down to the bottom, there would technically be another iPad covering that. So what we could do is simply, um, let's go here. We can uh, go in. First of all, we're going to go ahead and apply that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply a mask to it. So let's go ahead and apply a mask. And then we're just going to uh, use our rectangle tool. And we only want to mask out, I would say, from this spot down. And we're just going to make sure our foreground color is on black. And we're going to just fill that little rec that uh, little area of the mask with black uh, with an option or alt delete. And that will 
cover up that part of the image so that the uh, iPad that's on top could show through. And if you didn't move it over far enough, you could mask a little bit more, but that kind of gets you in the space you need. Now, the only other thing I kind of see here on this is I need to transform it one more time. And again, we get the distort from the original spot. I'm just gonna go ahead and tilt that up just a little bit more. I didn't quite get it in the corner down there because I couldn't see it. Okay, great, that one looks good now. So the next one, uh, we'll deselect. And we'll just go ahead and do another place, embed it, and we'll grab our second screenshot. And same thing, that one comes in, and we're just going to do a distort, right click, distort, and we'll just grab that top handle, and pull that one over to the corner of that iPad. Uh, we'll pull the bottom handle over to the corner of that blue screen, we'll pull the right handle over to the corner of that blue screen, and then it will all come together as soon as we move this handle over to the corner of that screen. And again, you might want to zoom in, make sure you're getting them lined up just right. And once you're all set, hit enter or the uh, click the check mark. And now you've got your two um, screenshots applied to the two different uh, spots on the screen. So now what happens when you get a new screenshot? This would be your template. You'd go ahead and save your file at this point. Save as. You need to save it as a Photoshop file so that you can always come back and edit it. I'm going to say 2UP iPad. And now that I've got my 2UP iPad, anytime I need to replace the screenshot, let's say the one on the right hand side, all I have to do is just right click on the name of that layer and then I get the option to replace contents. When I choose replace contents, it'll say, what do you want to replace it with? Now I just go grab the next screenshot. So I'll go here and grab number three. And then that will replace it. And notice it kept the same shape, same dimensions, same distortion, same size, same everything. As long as the screenshot that I'm bringing in is the same size as the original. It will map it per perfectly. If I were to go back to the first one, even with its mask, right click replace contents and I were to go grab uh, desktop and go grab that last capture and replace there it is comes in and it maintains the mask because the mask is masking it after the fact so there you have it how to do your template once you get your template set up now it's just to replace the screenshots anytime you want to replace those and I'll put them if you wanted to take it even a, up a notch just a step further then what you could do is you could also uh, turn on the generate image assets. We'll do that here and we could, let's go ahead and move these layers into our uh, layer group there. And now we have the word iPad and we're going to say, say that this is going to be um, iPads.jpg. So what that will do is every time I make a change of this, if we go out to the desktop, it will have an assets folder and make a JPEG. If I needed another one, let's say a ping at 50%, then I could say comma 50% iPads.png. And now, if I were to go back out to my assets, there is my 50% smaller ping file and my JPEG file. So I've got them both there as needed. So there you have it. I have the ability to have um, my two files, multiple files, multiple images, using uh, the replace feature for smart objects, and I can now have a template that I can use over and over and over again. And as needed, every time I replace that, I'll get new assets out on the desktop in the various file formats that I need them in. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Take care and we'll catch you on the next one.